The purpose of this online lesson is to provide additional insights into the sketching of the polar curves that you saw in your tutorial too. Now let's start with question 10b. The polar curve r equal to 1 minus cosine theta. We have seen in the uh, tutorial how this was sketched. So now let me use the program Mathematica to sketch the curve as the parameter data increases. So on the left hand side is a plot of r versus theta. On the right hand side is the polar curve itself. Let me play. Okay, this may be going a bit too fast, but let me try to explain what is going on here. Now, what you see here, the blue line that originally aligns with the polar axis is the ray that sweeps through 360 degrees as it plots out the polar curve, all right? So for example, at this point here, the value of data on the left hand side is actually pi over two, all right? And then R is equal to one. So you will expect that the distance from the origin to the point here, the red dot here, is 1. All right. So as you move to the value of data is equal to 180 degrees, which is pi, then you see that the distance from the origin to the red dot is actually 2. All right. So this distance here is 2. And the data that corresponds with it is theta equal to pi and then as it moves to 3 pi over 2 right the value of r goes back to 1 and theta of course is 3 pi over 2 and finally it goes back to its starting point where the distance r is 0 and it would have gone through 2 pi radians so let's go back again the ray here, the blue line here, sweeps through 360 degrees and traces out the polar curve. And the distance r is the distance from the origin to the point. Take note that data always increases in an anticlockwise direction from the positive polar axis all the way back to its starting point, right? So the natural domain for this question is 0 to 2 pi. Now let's take a look at question 10c. We are supposed to sketch the polar curve r equal to 4 sine 3 theta. So once again, on the left hand side is a plot of r versus theta. On the right hand side is our polar curve. Once again, we have this ray, right? The positive part is aligned with the positive x-axis. The negative part is aligned with the negative x-axis. Let me first play the video in one complete cycle. Right, positive, negative, as you see here, positive, and then one complete cycle. Okay, so let me explain this uh, uh, animation in more detail. So initially, Initially, the value of r when data is zero is just zero, so it lies at the origin, right? The red dot lies at the origin. As it slowly increases, as r slowly increases, remember that r is positive, so it lies on the positive side of the ray here. Okay, we call it the polar ray. Now, it increases all the way to pi over three. It falls back to zero, so the distance r now is zero. That's why it goes back to the origin. It's going back to the origin. And then beyond that, the value of r is supposed to be negative, right? Negative, it goes all the way down to negative 4. So from here, on this positive x-axis, to this line here, to this uh, blue line here, is actually pi over 2. In this case, to get our point on the polar curve, we have to move down in the negative range to the distance minus 4. Okay? So... Let me make it more accurate. Yep. So to get this point here, once again, you first measure the, the angle from the positive x-axis to the positive um, ray, to this uh, polar ray here, which is pi over 2. 
But remember that this distance here is r equal to negative 4. So you have to reflect this point about the origin to get this point. Right? That's how you get this red dot here. And then as it moves, the distance decreases back to 0 at theta equal to 2 pi over 3. And then it increases again in the positive side. Then goes back to 0 again. Right? So that's how the polar curve is plotted for this question. Okay, let's watch the animation once again. So as data varies from 0 to pi, the entire polar curve is traced out. Anything beyond pi is simply a repetition. Therefore, the natural domain for this polar curve is from 0 to pi. For this um, last demonstration, question 10a, it is r equal to minus 2 sine data. In this case, r is always negative because as you plot your r versus data, it lies on the negative side of the data axis. Therefore, when you plot your polar curve, you have to take that into account that you always plot on the negative side of the origin. So as we sweep through, take a look at the animation first. It is always on the negative side. The red part of the line here is the negative side. The blue part is the positive side, right? Okay, let me pause somewhere here at uh, pi over 2. Pi over 2 means that the angle from the positive x-axis or the polar axis to this blue color ray here is pi over 2, right? It's always to the positive side of the ray. And then remember that the value of r at this point is minus 2. So from 2, you have to reflect about the origin to the point minus 2 to get this point. And then once again, the value of r slowly decreases to 3 pi over 4. Right. At this point, the value r is somewhere at minus 1.5. So the distance from here to here is about 1.5. Okay. At the same time, the angle, angle from the positive x-axis all the way to this uh, blue line here is 3 pi over 4. Okay. And then finally, it sweeps through all the way to pi when this dot here returns to the origin where it started. So beyond pi is just repetition. Therefore, the natural domain for this uh, polar equation is from 0 to pi only. Let's watch the animation again. Now let's move on to question 12a where this polar curve is plotted for you and then you are supposed to find the area within the shaded region. So the polar equation is r is equal to square root data. So once again on the left hand side is a plot of r versus data. On the right hand side is the polar curve itself. So let's see how we can sketch this polar curve as your, your ray, your blue color line varies from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so let's watch the animation. R versus data is basically square root of data, so it's a square root function. So as your data increases, your R also increases gradually. Everything is on the positive side, so there's no complication here. And the value of data varies from 0 to 2 pi. Beyond 2 pi, it will continue to move on the spiral all the way. It is also possible to plot this polar curve for the domain from 0 to 4 pi. Then you will see the spiral moving outwards. Let's see pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. 
All right, you see it moving outwards as the value of r, which is the distance from the origin to the point on the curve, increases. Now let's take a look at 12b. The polar curve is r equal to 1 plus cosine theta. Once again, you have the blue ray here that sweeps from 0 all the way to 2 pi. Let's have a preview. So as this angle data increases from 0 to 2 pi, the polar curve is in trace out. You see that at this point, the radius is actually 0, and then slowly increases to a maximum again, back at 2. Right. So let's watch the animation. Let's move on to question 12c. r is equal to 4 plus 3 sine data. The r versus data curves look like this. All right, everything is positive, so you expect that the polar curve is being traced out by the positive part of the ray. So let's see how the animation goes. Once again, data slowly increasing from 0 all the way sweeping through 2 pi. And then once more, R is always positive. Now, this is the last example that I want to demonstrate online today. This is R equal to sine 2 data. The R versus data curves looks like this on the left hand side. There are positive parts and there are negative parts. So you expect both the positive ray, which is the blue line, and the negative ray, the red line, will sweep through different parts of the polar curve. So let's see how it goes. R slowly increases from 0 all the way to pi over 4, and then back to pi over 2 where it reaches the distance of 0 and then after that the distance of r is negative so it is being plotted on the negative side of the origin which is this red color line here everything is red until it reaches a maximum of 1 the distance of uh, the, the line here from 0 to the blue the red dot here is 1 and then after that it goes back to 0 again data equal to pi and then it moves up again on the positive side the positive side is the blue color line here which is the maximum of 1 again and then at data equal to 3 pi over 2 why 3 pi over 2? because the angle is always measured from the positive x-axis to the positive part of the ray which is the blue line here and this angle is 3 pi over 2 and after that it goes into the negative side again all right all the way then back to zero where it would have reached the original starting point anything beyond 2 pi will be a mere repetition of the polar curve so we do not include that into the natural domain of the polar curve so the domain for this question is from 0 to 2 pi well let's watch the animation once more Once more, positive, negative, positive, negative, back to the origin. Right, thanks for watching this online lesson today. I will see you next week for your CA1. Lesson will start at 11 a.m. Don't forget. 
to attend lesson next week. All right, see you.